Hi viewers, today we have a very special episode. Ninebot have released the Ninebot Z10 into the American market and the Asian market. It's not quite here yet in Europe, officially. We have a sample unit which we are to test, unbox, test, and see how we get on. But before that, a little preface to the whole thing. I'm wearing one of the original tops from the Ninebot 1 when it first came out. Um, and this is where Speedyfeet's history lies within the Ninebot 1. This machine here is what really started it all for Speedyfeet. Gave us confidence in a product that was well built, was well funded, um, and the people doing it had a passion for that product. So we're pretty excited to have the newest, latest version of this. There was the Ninebot 1 S2 in between, which brought down the size, the power. But this new one they've got released has upped the size and the power. So pretty excited to get our hands on it. Everybody else has as well. It's on fire on the internet right now. People grey importing it um, into Europe and all sorts of things going on. So a lot going on. But we thought we'd cover that because it's very important. This is, this is where Speedy Feet started essentially with this. And so this is the 9 Watt 1 E+. Plus. Many of you don't recognise it. I expect some of you will. Great looking machine when it came out, 500 watt motor, just looks brilliant. Uh, it's just a great piece of kit, very, very well designed. There was nothing really as sharp as this on the market at the time, and it also incredibly robust. So it's modular design, really well built, gave us full confidence, um, and then we went. And Speedy Feet took it on, took it to heart, and went with it. Um, we worked through with Ninebot, we got an exclusive with Ninebot, and then we were shattered when the, all the exclusives were revoked. And they changed direction and got a European office, and unfortunately it went a bit sour. But the love of Ninebot and the product has never gone away. It's, it's always been there. It is the pedigree that we built off essentially. So we love it, we've got a place in our heart for it. It is a great wheel, still a great wheel. Slower than some would like, less powerful than some would like doesn't go as far as some would like in benchmarking against other wheels that are out today. But it's a great starter wheel. It sits in that category. You can, it is completely still usable. Brilliant wheel. So, we're not here to review this though. We're here to review the Z10. So without further ado, let's introduce it. Oh my goodness, that's heavy. Interestingly, the box is inside out. Mainly because there's a picture on the outside. The mask, what it is. So let's open this up. It smells fresh. So in the top of the box, you get an instruction manual. You get your charge lead and some tools and an extension to pump up the tire. Allen key. The charger is bespoke. So it is specifically built for this unit. You can't use your nine, previous 9 but one charger. That out. Oh, look at it. So as you can see there, it's all packed away very, very neatly. Polystyrene molded specifically for this. Um, and it's looking the business. So this here is the trolley handle and mudguard kit, which fits to it. You can bolt it on. And this is the Z10 itself. Let's get it out of the box. Wow, how are you seeing it? Oh, you're seeing it. Look at it. I mean, that is a thing of beauty, isn't it? I mean, it looks absolutely amazing. It's designed so well. It looks really, really good. It wins in the looks department. Put it that way. Okay, has it got any power in it? No. It needs charging up. You've got this huge tyre on it right here. It looks absolutely amazing, real wide. Something that Batman would ride around, basically. You've got a really nice finish here. Looks like a carbon fibre, sort of a carbon fibre finish. It's got the screws that go in here, very nicely recessed in there. This is like a soft finish, but it's still hard, but it's a soft finish to it. You've got a rubberized back piece here with the screw holes where you put the mud guard and the trolley handle kit on. Here's a charging cover, which is reminiscent of the blue top on the handle of the 9 bot one E+. And just flip open like that, revealing the charge port. And it ever so gracefully just goes back in. Absolutely amazing. Power button. 
and then you have a battery readout meter there. You've got front headlights, so this lights up, and you've got two central lights as well. And then you've got LED light rings in here, in here, and also at the back they show here and here as well. Foot plates, the same as the original foot plates on 9 bot one so it's like a nod back to the original 9 bot one held in place by magnets with inside the machine and in the foot plate itself. Wow, what a great looking machine. Right, let's get this unit on charge. Okay, and whilst that's on charge, I'll go through what's in the boxes. So you get a trolley handle, which you can fit to the unit. You get two spare grip tapes for your foot plates. Come in a little bag, two of them, sticky back plastic. So we get wear one of them out, swap them over. And you also get a fender stroke mud guard, which fits over the back here, like so, and it bolts on. Not only that, you get padding that you can fit, fit on the side if you so choose. So there is a diagram on the bag showing you how to fit these. It's not in the manual, strangely, but it's on that bag. One goes on here, approximately, there, and then you've got another piece which fits under here, so it goes there. Won't be putting them on, but they're there if you need them. Extra padding, stroke protection for the body of the unit. I would advise if you're a beginner, or you want the extra padding because it's too flat, then put those on if it suits. Okay, once you've got your mud guard out and trolley handle out, you can actually fit either or both of these. So you could just put the mud guard on if you wanted to, or you could put just the trolley handle on, or you can put both on. I'll show you how to do this now. And with the Allen key it came with, go through and undo one, two, three, four, five. And you need to do both sides. And what it's doing is it's holding an insert on here. So this slides out once you've undone these screws, just slides out, same both sides. Okay, and this just slides out. And it's basically a blanking plate, nicely threaded there, some brass inserts. Remove those, keep them safe, of course. With the mud guard, you could just put that straight on if you wanted to. And then these two holes up here, that's where the two screws in your pack come in. Basically slots in there, slots in there, and it would sit on like that. So you could screw this on. Now you'll note that it's only this screw and this screw that need to be put on. The rest can be left out, plus the two at the top. So you could just put it on like that if you wanted to without the trolley handle. And just screw it on. Be very, very careful with these inserts here when you're putting them in. Make sure you've definitely got a good thread going through when you use the screws here to put it on. If you cross thread this, you're gonna be stuck or if it gets stuck, you'll actually rip it out of the plastic casing if you're not careful and then you're in trouble. So just make sure you're threading it on correctly. But for the sake of this one, let's put both on, both the mud guard and the trolley handle. Okay, you can see three screw holes on here, both sides, and you want to be putting this on here. So if that was on its own, you'd push that into position. Because we're doing both, let's get the mud guard into position. Making sure to feed it in correctly, both sides. It will need stretching out slightly to get it into the position, like so. So that's now in position. So you just need to go through and do up the screws on the side. Certainly important to note here that when you put the screws in, make sure you don't tighten them up each at a time. You just need to make sure that they're, they're all going in, they're all in position first, at least halfway in each screw. Once they're all in position, loosely done, go round and tighten them all up. 
Okay, and that is now all fitted in. Solid mud guard right there. So all we need to do now is put the last two remaining screws in position. Now these came in the box with the charger and the Allen key. Okay, job done. So you're talking about a 10 or 15 minute job. Just be really careful when you're threading these in, as I say, you don't want to cross thread, it'll save you a lot of heartache. It's always best to reset, take them back out, reset, check things, rather than try and screw it in and force it in. Just recheck, try and seat it correctly, and it will go in with ease if it's all aligned correctly. Okay, that is it, all fitted. Don't forget to keep the two blanking brackets here, and of course, the Allen key. And this is how it works, basically, slides up, position like that. So quite a high handle, and just pushes back down like that. The other thing is, it's got a nice reflector back on it. So this is actually a reflector, it sits along the back here. So it's a bit of extra visibility for you, especially if you're traveling at night. You've obviously got the LEDs running there, but that's on there. So that's what it looks like. So obviously you can use this for when the unit's low on power and you need to push it, or if you're going into a, a shop or you're on the tube, don't lift up the unit by the trolley handle. It's not designed for that. Still use the handle to lift up the unit. And of course, you're not gonna have mud up your back now or water spray. So ideal for winter conditions, muddy conditions, and for transporting around. So say you can fit one or the other, it doesn't matter. Um, or you can fit both like we've done in this video. And it's 25.3 kilograms with just a mudguard fitted and the unit itself. When it's fully charged, the light will go green and it will display full battery. Okay, all kitted up. Time to head out on this range test now from Speed HQ and just see how far this Z10 goes. So my initial impressions of this wheel, um, with the wider tyre, you hit a camber, you're trying to go along a camber, and it tries to pull you down the camber, <laughs> which is an interesting experience, which you don't get with the, the, um, the thinner tyres. So this tyre is actually, we'll try and film it. Uh, when you're going across a camber, it's trying to push you down, and you have to fight against it to try and stay straight. Um, but this is going to take some conditioning because it's a completely different size wheel to anything else out there on the market. So this is all new. Um, so it could be a case of conditioning and getting used to riding it. So this is early stages. We'll see how it goes. So this is the M Super X going round and it's up high to where my leg is. I can just tilt it in. I can lean and go and it's absolutely fine. All good. No issues at all. Now let's try it on the Z10. Just trying to push this thing over the speed you can go into it is a lot slower it doesn't perform the same so it's always trying to stand upright and i'm going to throw it in and it just rolls it rolls around that tire no issue at all just rolls around it um, so you can lean in no issue now with the z10 you try and throw it into a corner like that it does not work um, so what the tire tries to do is sit you up as I'll try and demonstrate. Okay, now I'm entering the roundabout. So I've even got a bit of wobble entering the roundabout. If I try and now turn it in, it will not go, no matter what I do. So it's trying to stand upright. That's what it's trying to do, it's trying to stand upright.
Okay, I've got to 46% battery, um, and I'm about 16, 17 miles in. Let's have a quick check on the old app. Um, but first, I stopped riding. Uh, I've paused map my ride, which I'm using to track the actual journey rather than the app itself to make sure it's accurate. Um, I've paused it because I'm actually on a strong route, should we call it, as in going fast. So I'm pushing it to see what the mileage is at absolute worst case scenario. So we've been going up steep hills, um, off road and pushing it hard. Hence the reason fully kitted up, got everything on here. Um, so let's have a quick look at the app. Um, but what it's done is it's restricted me. So the original top speed was 28.6 miles per hour and now it's beeping at 27.3. And now I'm still still has gone up slightly because the battery's recovered a little bit. Um, but let's have another look at the app screen. As you can see there, 27.9. Let's keep moving the wheel back and forth until it disappears. If I stay still, it shows you the lock icon. So, so 27 miles an hour, uh, 27.9, 28, um, it's gone down to. So that's what it does when you drop below 50. It starts throttling your top speed, which, let's be honest, that is <laughs> that sort of speed is absolutely fine anyway but i thought i'd note it because that's what it does it's got intelligent monitoring there and presumably that'll taper off right down until the battery starts getting low well there's a flicker um it's not actually flickering that's just the camera doing that <laughs> picking up the refresh rate if mario was here he'd adjust that and make it good but it's yeah it gives you a battery readout there which is pretty neat um i need to remove that sticker who doesn't like removing stickers and wants to keep things new well, I've got my hand up. Well, we're at 28%. I wanted to catch it. 27 on one battery and 28. So for those of you watching and wondering, why is it at two readouts? It's a battery either side of the unit, just like in the 1S2. Um, and so we're at 28%, um, 27% on the other battery. Now, it restricts you massively. So it says 21.4 miles an hour there. That is a maximum speed it can go. Now, at that speed, the trouble with that is... At that speed, what you end up with um, is not being able to go that speed. The buffer to where it starts beeping. So you can go the speed, but it lets out all my did -did 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 noise, as you've already heard on this uh, video. Um, and that is slightly frustrating. So through town, yeah, um, you have to basically back off. So now I have to do, at that speed, it seems to be about a three mile an hour buffer. Um, so at that speed, I'm doing about 19. So if you say whatever the max speed it says you allowed you to do, um, it's about a two or three mile an hour buffer to where the noise cuts in. So if you want no noise, you can't ride at 22. You have to ride three mile an hour slower, approximately. Um, so, yeah. But feedback so far, it is an absolute beast of a machine. Uh, it feels really, really solid. I mean, it looks well built. It is well built. It rides so well. Um, I mean, the tyre, it does follow... Um, cracks in the road um, and things like that now this is deliver this is this is we're riding this basically at delivered psi so whatever that is uh, later on in further videos we will run through and try different tire pressures and do experiments there because apparently uh, a lower tire makes it much more better more comfortable ride really um, but it is an absolutely outstanding machine and really well built so basically what we've discovered here is if you go full tilt i.e. as maximum power as you can put out, pushing it really hard, um, full armor on, um, you know, it's, you're going to get, if you could, you get about 25 to 30 miles out of it at that ratio, um, but it dials it down, doesn't allow you to do those speeds, of course, for safety, so yeah, at the moment, we are down to about 19 miles an hour, if you don't want the beeping going on, which is still, of course, more than enough, but I can't do a full extreme test, uh, which is not something you do every single day anyway, because of the limitations within the firmware, which is all very good, very safe, good to see, it's exactly how it should be. If you want these things to go mainstream, all that uh, safety needs to be built in. So it's good to see, not complaining, but that's just the way it is. So at 50% downwards, you start to spiral down, and you lose your top end speed that you can attain. So I hope that helps you understand where we're at with that. So at this point in time, I am 19.86 miles in. Uh, I did the video before this. So the average speed has gone down a touch, but at average speed without me stopping and chatting is 16. It was on 16. Uh, it's just dropped because I've set up this camera and stuff to do this bit. But we've done basically 20 miles and we are on 28% battery.
So it's going to be interesting to see what, what actually happens now as it starts to go down below 20, which I'm going to get in a bit, and just see exactly what happens. How much does it tilt me back? Is it stopping you from riding? Can you do five miles an hour? So we're just going to see now where this goes. Um, and then we're going to do another test. This is two. It's a bit of a bonus one. Cause it's a bit of a special one for us. Um, and we're going to do just a normal ride to see what sort of difference that makes to the top end and the mileage, um, basically, to see how far we can actually push this machine without going stupid speeds, just normal speeds. So most people are going to be riding around about 15 miles an hour if they're popping to work and things like that. And if you're on the pavement, you're riding even less. So we'll try and do that and try and do it on a normal route, less hilly, less off-road. We, I mean, the elevations we've gone this time round are, are, are pretty big. We've gone up some steep hills. Anyway, let's push this a bit further, record the whole thing, see what how it behaves, what it does. My only little thing would be that I would like them to change the beeping. One really to probably be a little bit louder. It's quite quiet, especially with a full head helmet on. You can hardly hear that beep telling you to slow down because you've got the wind going in and you just lose that noise. Now, with a machine that does this sort of speed, really what you want is you want the alarm to be louder the faster you go and to run it through the main speakers. It sounds like it's not coming through the main speakers. It might be, it just sounds like it isn't. It's quite low when you've got this on and you're going fast, the wind's rushing by, you can't really hear it, which is a bit of a danger. So I'm gonna put that suggestion to them that the faster you go, when those beeps cut in at that top end, it gets louder, so you can definitely hear it. So that'd be good, that's just one thing. And the other thing is when you're coming downhill, you're, and when, when you are regenerating power, it would be good if it didn't beep. So you can coast down a real long, mile long hill like I had today, and it's beeping at you, but it's actually bringing in power back to the machine. So it would be good if it, the firmware noticed that you're regenerating power, and then it just said, well, don't beep, because power is going in, so there's no risk here, kind of thing. So that would be good. That's two suggestions for 9 bot. But let's crack on. Okay, well, we're at 9% just. I mean, it was on 10. I pulled over to film. It's on 9 now. Um, and it pretty much, when it gets to a certain point, it reflects the top speed you can do. So now we can just do about 10 um, without the beeps happening. So it's restricted right down now. Don't think we're going to get that quoted 5 miles, though, remaining. We shall see. Currently on pause, but we have done 22.65 miles currently speed obviously the average speed is dropping down now significantly and it will continue to do so over this period so that's the time i've been traveling and this is the mileage we're at so she has been performing flawlessly the restrictions when the battery gets low are a bit of a pain that's the only downside um so this machine looks the business and you're basically batman that is what you are but you're only batman for the first 15 miles then you need to put your civilian clothes on and act, act sensible. So absolutely a whale of a time for those first 15, 16 miles. Absolutely brilliant. Real strong machine. Um, of course, you need to arm yourself up. Full face helmets and everything are required at that sort of speed. Um, you don't want to be traveling through that through cities. But out on the trails out here, you know, this sort of stuff, this is, it is absolutely fine. As long as no one's around, you get to keep it safe. And if you just need that extra bit of a punch to get past someone or a cyclist or something, then, you know, it's there if you need it. But you do need to be wearing your kit. But it has felt extremely strong. There's never a time when you thought, whoa, this is pushing its power output or anything like that. It is performed flawlessly. So if you just rode it normally, you wouldn't even notice these low battery issues particularly. But as you can see now, you're getting down to the anything below 30% starts to niggle a little bit. And it shows more if you've been traveling at a higher speed throughout your journey until you get to that point. It's like, oh, come on. Um, but of course, it's got to do it. It's low battery, and it is what it is. So you need to take it steady. So this sort of time now, you know, I am just limping home, essentially. So from 15% and below, you're on limp mode, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing the next next part of the test which is going to be just the normal riding and see what result that produces and see what an impact it makes going a lot slower and sort of doing you know sort of maximum of 18 miles an hour on that journey and we'll see one thing to note is where your ankles specifically my ankles they touch this side pad here which is just solid and it runs all at the side here there is no padding and there is no separation from this side panel it's all smooth, so your legs start at the top and they run down. There's nothing making them bow out or sit out on the footplate. 
And that has been bashing against my ankle bone like a good one. So I'm probably going to put on my super, super red boots soon for the next part of the journey. That needs some serious conditioning, especially if you ride hard. Or you know, high and hard, I don't mean specifically fast. I just mean you're riding for an hour and a half, two hours. That's going to start to uh, start to batter your ankles. It will go away. It's just like all these machines. It's conditioning. So, And I know that, so I'm not bothered by it. But I thought I'd mention it. And no sooner did I speak. Um, the top speed is... I can't quite read that there. 6.2. Which means I can go about 4 till it starts beeping. With a battery on both reading 9. And let me demonstrate how annoying that can be. So we set off. And... Uh, yeah, and it's tilted me backwards, um, yeah, so it's actually doing a tilt back at the speed as well, so, yeah, right, so it's just, yeah, it's just basically tilting me back now, at four, five miles an hour, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty much not usable at 9%. I've got a long way to go home as well, I am probably two, three miles away from home, didn't fit the trolley handle, ruins the look. <laughs> Was that a sensible decision? Hmm. It's got plenty of power going uphill, so I'm going up the hill just fine, but the firmware is restricting me to four miles an hour, and I've got to enjoy all the beeping, which you may be able to hear over the microphone, I'm not sure, I've got the mic set up so I shouldn't have interference essentially, so you can't really then hear the alarms probably, but hopefully you can hear it. Whoa, That's com actually it's completely stopped beeping now. What's going on? Why has it done that? Let's push on a little bit more. Let's see what happens. I'm also climbing an extremely steep hill. So that's good timing. Oh, it's pushing me back. Okay. This is gonna be a long, long time getting home. I'm filming with the iPhone now because it's getting a bit leery. Um, but he's not happy. He's like, no, leave me alone. I've almost run out. Sadly, uh, yeah, uh, I am a long way from home. Can you see that? It's going forward and backwards on its own little cycle. Totally unrideable. It's dipping forward. Oh no, that's it. We're at it, 3% remain on the battery. Totally dipping forward. You can see the foot plates are almost touching the floor. Um, yeah, it is out, it is out. Dolt. And there you can see, look, 2%. 0 0.7 mile remaining, that's not true. Um, cannot ride it at all now, so. Dolt. It is a long walk home. You know that time you wish you hadn't worn full armour and uh, ridden two miles out of range and you wish you put a trolley handle on? You know that time? Yeah. Darn. By the way, no power at all. Completely dead. So <laughs> it's no stabilization. So I can't even roll it whilst it's making a noise. No! So to hold it up and push it at the same time because it's so heavy you can't carry it. Right. Well, kind of civilization. <sighs> oh man. I'm going to try and thumb a lift. Because I've got another mile now, probably to go. Lame. Well, that didn't work. He's gone. Right. Let's try a different tactic. That's the one car every 10 minutes gone. Might as well walk forward. Every step's closest, step closer to home. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's someone else. I wonder if they're so down for me. They might do. They might do. No. Uh, no. That's good. 
Wouldn't it be lovely if they did? Let me stand on the road a bit more. Maybe it'll slow him down and then think, hang on a minute, this isn't right. He needs some help. Damn it. No, it should be fault, really. Oh, oh, no. Just a bit slower. Slow down now. That's a result. Now, we've got a trailer though. Could do with that, put that in there. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Let's try this guy. I wonder if he'll uh, pick me up. Oh, he's gonna. Hey, well, that's good. He slowed down and then he's not gonna. That's good, isn't it? That's nice. Took one look at me. No, thanks. Give that a miss. Wusses. Two blokes in a car. Two young lads. You think they go, we right, pick him up. It's just me and you, buddy. It's just me and you. Are you dead? Come back. Come back. <laughs> Hitchhiking hasn't worked out. Um, so, I'm taking a shortcut through the woods. Because I'm pretty sure there's a pub up there. So that's priority, really. <sighs> Pub wouldn't let me in. Don't open till three. So that's out of the question. <sighs> Have got a mate to give me a lift though. Who lives near the pub, happens to be in. <sighs> Home. Right, let's try and charge it up. <sighs> right. Hopefully it just charges like normal because it's completely dead. You see, still dead. Been carrying it for over an hour. Yes, it is still working. Good. Right. And that is charging. Wowee. Right. Let's leave that charging now for a few hours. Wow, what a machine. So well built. I want to talk through now exactly how it's been. And remember, this is the first video of a series of videos. So this is the unboxing and the range test, which you've basically already seen so far up to date. But there is a second range test, so it's not, not much footage of it. It's basically me just taking it out again, so I'll do it a second time to reconfirm the original distance. It's something I've started to do lately, just to basically be solid and sure that the original figure you've got is going to be the, more about the same, more or less the same as the the next result. So it's kind of benchmarking it in some respects. But this machine is so well built; it's incredible. It's one of the few machines, and probably the only real machine I've ever ridden. And I've thought you could take this to a government official and say this machine should be welcomed on the streets. It's such a solidly built machine; nothing feels like it's going to give. Nothing rattles. It's all very, very well engineered and built. So a massive thumbs up from that point of view. Now where I stand with the actual riding style, especially with this massive tire, is that it's slow speeds. It's not very nice to ride. It really isn't. Now, despite where what the figures show in this video, at this current time of recording, I've done just over 100 miles and I think, pretty much. So it's got some miles on it. It's not 20 miles in or 50 miles in, it's 100 miles in and at slow speeds, it is not very nice to handle. Now that becomes apparent, one, when you're going along pavements which have got uh, repairs done to them, so you go off, a bit like this video I'm showing you now, that sort of thing, it can send you off. And if you couple that with a very low battery, so at base, anything below 10% is not usable. The speed you have to go is so slow that on any other wheel with a thinner tire, it would actually just about be doable. I mean, we're talking four miles an hour here. With this, you have to fight the thing unless you're on a real smooth surface. So that's definitely a negative. Low speeds, hard work. None of this stuff is unrideable. It's the same with a lot of wheels. It, almost anything, I keep saying it, almost anything is actually rideable, depending on rider skill. So. You can moan about it, but at the end of the day, you can actually ride it. It's just a lot more difficult. And so it depends whether you want ease of riding or not. So slow speeds, you're gonna find it difficult. Now, as you increase those speeds, this is where the machine comes into its own, really. It feels ridiculously strong. So when you push it, it feels strong. It doesn't feel like it's gonna give out. It doesn't feel like it's gonna fail. Having the two batteries is great. One checking against the other if there was a fault 
the other one should take over and continue and carry that load. So from that point of view, it's absolutely brilliant. The throttling is interesting, shall we say. So 10%, you basically do away with that. You can't ride it at 10%, which goes against the grain in some respects. The Mini Plus review, which we've done recently, that responded well at 10% and below. This throttles it down massively, and it does drop quickly as well from 10% down in experience with this machine, uh, twice over. So both times is exactly, exactly the same way. So there's that. You also get a bit of uh, foot, foot plate tilt back at very low battery. So we're talking 10%, 13% and down, where there is no audible warning, but the foot plates tilt back and washy at that. And it's that I know straight away, that feels like typical nine volt in the way that the battery, how it, how it feeds back from the battery in the tilt back. But there's no audible warning saying low battery or anything like that. It just washes back. So yeah, there's that. But at the higher speed, so those are my, I'm trying to, trying to concentrate on the negatives here because the thing with this machine is it looks so beautiful that it is, it's captivated everyone essentially. But it is a bit of a Marmite machine and for those that don't understand that term, it means you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. So from that point of view, this, this wheel, I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. The way it's packed and designed and engineered, it's just top quality. But there are those things that make it hard work. So it does make me take a double think before I take this wheel out when I'm choosing a wheel. And I have the privilege, obviously, of having lots of wheels to choose from. And this isn't my necessarily my go-to wheel. If I want to have an amazing laugh and hit the trails hard, kit up fully, as you've seen in that video, and go out, this is brilliant. If you want to look the business whilst you're riding along, this is brilliant. There's many things that are amazing about it. And those tend to come to the forefront at mid to high speed, mid to high speed off-road, mid to high speed on-road. That in that area is brilliant. The rear light's so bright, so, just absolutely brilliant rear light. It's a small thing, but it's just such an excellent light. It's just not a normal bulb. It's just amazing the way they've done it. The way this slides in, uh, where you charge it up, just push it in gently. It just engineered so well. Front lights are really good. They could do with improvements, say with the with adjustment as you go uphill and down a hill. But just just great. Low low motor noise. Tire noise isn't too bad to be fair on the road, considering the size of the wheel, the foot plates, they grip. I've been riding it in the rain. Not shown on here, but I've been riding it in the rain and I've got the tilt back because of low battery on my second test. And I didn't slide off. I actually intentionally pushed forward with it tilted right back to see if my feet would slide off and it was soaking wet. Didn't slide off at all, gripped on nicely. So from that point of view, it's working well. There's not been a hint of any issues with it at all. So it's a real, real difficult one to try and to say to someone, should you buy it? I mean, if this is your first wheel, you're going to be spoiling yourself, put it that way. I mean, it is an amazing wheel. There's just no two ways about it. It really isn't. But it does have disadvantages. It isn't the be all and end all, this wheel. So don't be tricked into thinking that this is just going to answer all your, all your, all your tick boxes with the wheel you choose because it will leave some not ticked. Um, and that comfort at the low speed on cambers and specifically where it's, there's an, like, almost like tram lines in the road, it follows it quite a lot. Uh, so there's another point as well I want to make. I'm just going to spin this on the side and I need a helping leg. Oh, got the leg. Got the helping leg. Let's just turn this around the other way. I want to demonstrate something to you. So have you seen, just before I go on to this, just as you've seen in the video, you don't want to be carrying this any distance. It is a heavy wheel. It is a lump. Now, when you are on this wheel, just to interject here, here are the results of the second distance test that I did. Now, bear in mind that I always aim to get the least range. There's no point in giving you guys out there the maximum range you can get, because if I was going to do that, I would stick my 12 year old on it, who weighs about half what I weigh. And I'd say, let's go for a distance test. And I'd come back to you and say, yes, it does 70 miles. There's no point in doing that. So what I tend to do is I kit up and I head out and that is always going to be the same. I'm trying to get the minimum. So at that point, you guys know, well, I'm going to get this or more. That's the whole idea. So 
it's been ridden hard. So I've tried to actually, uh, this is the only one I've ever done it because of the confidence in this machine. I've actually ridden it to try and see if I can break it, which is very unusual for me. I won't usually do that. It is something I'm not keen on doing at all. This has kind of said, give me some more. And I've pushed it up to where its maximum is essentially within the firmware limitations. And it's just handed it out. But bearing that in mind, I'm not talking about doing average speeds at 10 miles an hour. I'm talking about doing stupid speeds. Now I'm wearing that kit you see me kit up in is running into the tune of probably 500 pounds worth of equipment that I'm wearing to protect my body. So that's the sort of money that's being invested in that equipment. So <laughs> it's not like shoving on a cycle helmet and going out. Um, and secondly, I'm doing it to research this machine and to push it to its maximums. I don't suggest you ever go out and go really, really fast in every, almost every single video. You will see me saying, don't go fast and you can run from zero. But if you're wondering why other people on their Z10s, and it always happens this with range tests, why are they getting 50 miles out of theirs and you're only getting 25, it makes no sense. I am, my promise has always been to be just honest and just do the ride and report back. And that's all I can do. And that is what I've done in this case. And in fact, we've increased that slightly because we're doing two on most machines now, two tests. So we've got some form of uh, calibration to see whether there's something quirky about the first one or the second one. Um, so from that point of view, that is what we've got. Moving on. Your leg position is approximately, he's not gonna go flat footed because he's slightly on his toes, but imagine his foot was flat. It is approximately there, that is great. So you've got control here from the top of the unit. And it is a very dense and low down unit, so it does sit low on your leg. And what that means is the more weight you've got in a dense ball lower down, it's harder to control, especially if you get a speed wobble on, or any wobble really. But at speed, it takes more time to slow down and stop until you're safe. But if you're going fast and you slam on the brakes, your legs end up here, approximately. Now, as you can see, this has missed this side pad entirely. Because the back slopes away in such a lovely design, <laughs> can't deny it, it actually sweeps forward, so it's like that. You've got nothing to grip onto with either leg, because your legs are back here. They're actually like that if you break hard. Now they're missing this side, and you've got nothing to grip onto. Now I discovered that at night time, when going pretty quick with all the kit on doing, say, in the second test, and when I leant, I got a wobble on, and I leant back, and I had nothing to grip, and I was like, whoa. So it was solely on trying to relax, and I had no control over the actual unit in terms of gripping it, because um, the only way to get grip was to lean forward, and I did not want to accelerate at that point. So that is one little thing that uh, is worth keeping in mind. Thank you very much. Breaking itself, I haven't found to be an issue at all. It's only if you're in difficulty and you go back and I'm used to grabbing the unit with my legs to try and control that wobble which is doing underneath you, there's nothing there. So it's only that um, and low speed riding is where this falls apart. But it excels in so many areas. It's just, it is just amazing, it's an amazing machine. And I can't really say much more than that. I mean, if you've got a machine that, like the, so it would definitely get tranced by the M Super X. It, it just would. If you took it out on a, uh, you said you wanted to go as fast as you possibly can, as far as you can, the M Super X would wipe the floor with it. But the M Super X doesn't look like this. And it doesn't quite perform like this with this wide tire. So if you were doing an endurance race and speed, the N Super X would, you'd still be going whilst this is run out, as you can see on the video. But the engineering behind this and how well it's built is just a winner for me. Now, me personally, if I step aside and say, would I buy this wheel if I wasn't doing speedy feet? And if it was, I, I, I would buy it. I would definitely buy it. It wouldn't be my, it wouldn't make, make me sell all my wheels and say, right, brilliant, I've got this wheel now, that's just. That's ticked all the boxes, this is brilliant. I can get rid of all those and ride this, not at all. Definitely not. I would buy it just because it's a boy's toy, essentially, it's a boy's toy. And it just makes you feel awesome riding it. For the first 15 miles, and then I say, civilian clothes back on. 
but during that time it is just outstanding. Just don't ride slow is the answer really. And I've been riding it a lot, so I've done almost 100 miles on it. Um, but there will be a second video, so when it gets, and it's going to be a not very long way, is it? Let's be honest. <laughs> there will be a second video at 250 kilometres. And I will then update you there and try and get some more video footage for you of steep hill climbs, descents, loads of different things. Now we're heading into winter as well, so I'll be able to report back on what it handles like. I've ridden this in the rain, as I say, this mud guard, spot on. Doesn't You don't get any mud spraying at your back, nothing at all. It's perfectly covered. It's just brilliant. I say this, this is actually a, you could take this somewhere to an official department and show them how amazing these things are, how safe they are how well engineered they are, all the safety features built in. It's a perfect setup vehicle to demonstrate to a government body that these should be promoted heavily. I just think it's absolutely outstanding. What's really become apparent and what I absolutely love is the passion for these has just spiked for the electric unicycles, not just for this model, but this model has brought forward the excitement, which we haven't seen for several years really, Something completely revolutionary, something that looks completely different, it's well designed, well engineered, well packaged from a reputable company. You know, bringing this forward has switched so many people onto these that it's only got to be a good thing. And what really excites me is what's next? You know, what's going to be after the Z10? What improvements and tweaks are they going to make? You think what I showed at the start of this video is the 9Bot 1, the original one. It was, and when that came out, if you're new to this, but when the 9Bot 1 first came out four or five years ago, that was a wheel that everyone went, whoa, because everything before that was pretty boxy and not didn't look good. And they brought something out that looked really sexy. And then this, the jump from that to this, it's taken them years, <laughs> but the jump from that to this is just absolutely amazing. And I just wonder what's next. I mean, it does spike the excitement. It does, it does spike the passion and it does draw people in to electric unicycles and it puts a focus on them. And then if the focus is on something as well built as this, that's only a good thing. I would happily demonstrate this to anybody in any official department that wanted to see the possibilities of the future. This is a glimpse of where we're going. I'm hoping next gen of this will have built-in redundancy within the boards. I mean, it, it's, oh man, it just opens up so many possibilities, this vehicle. I just think it's, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. But it won't be the sole wheel. It really won't. It is not, it doesn't answer everything. I must stress that. If you're, if you've got loads of wheels, you're likely to buy this to be fair. And I think if you haven't got a wheel on your first wheel, if you can afford it, then you'll buy this. But it, there, if it is your only wheel and this is the only thing you've ever ridden there or other, don't take it as this is the best thing because you're basing it on a product of one. You need to ride loads of other wheels and ride them for a considerable time. So I always recommend 50 miles to, so, to until you can tell what a wheel is, what it's like at its heart and how, how it responds. Because a lot of these things are down to the rider. So I'm still holding judgment even with the slow speed riding. One, because I've already mentioned the tire pressure and two, my ability. So I'm holding judgment and this is partly why we do these videos. So we do 250, 650 and a thousand kilometers and that's why we do it. It opens up the opportunity to either find problems or overcome rider error. But it definitely is difficult, definitely difficult at low speeds. It's not just that I've just completely dismissed it. It is, um, yeah, it is hard work and I, I will stand by that fact. There's a lot of wheels that are a lot easier to ride at slower speeds than this. And there's a lot of wheels that go further than this. And there's, you know, there's a lot of things it doesn't do, but there's a lot of things it does do right. And if you want confidence in the build quality, then this would be the wheel to get. So if you're saying, I just want safety, I don't want the fastest wheel in the market, but this is fast. You know, it is fast. We're starting to lose our comprehension of what's fast and what's not. And then you say a wheel does 15, people say that's slow. Well, it used to be really, really quick 15. Now you're getting wheels that go 35 miles an hour. This wheel does 28 miles an hour, but you get the beeper of mile an hour, two mile an hour below that. So that is absolutely plenty. So, yeah, so for those those things, it ticks a lot of boxes, leaves some unticked, but what they've come up with here, what nine bot stroke Segway have come up with here is just, is outstanding. If you've got the money to spare, then buy it, uh, by all means. I know I would just because of its looks and it 
it's it does something a little bit more than other wheels. It just gives you the confidence to ride and and actually enjoy it. It's brought when I've been riding this has brought massive enjoyment. I haven't been riding it thinking is this going to cut out at any moment. I've just been right enjoying the ride. And that that is saying something when you can just go out with absolute confidence. It just feels just really solid. And I hope that it goes all the way up to a thousand kilometers and that stays the same and doesn't change. And I hope we don't start getting reports of failed machines. I hope this wheel comes to production because it's taken so long, fit for market. And that's what I hope of it. So I really hope this video has is, is helped you and uh, shone a light on what this is and what it isn't and how it should work and if it could work for you or not. I mean, any, any questions, comment below or write into info at speedyfeed.co.uk and we'll answer your questions. This doesn't come to the market uh, until about Christmas time in the EU. And of course, we're in, look at the date that this was recorded. It's 2018. So don't ask when, where are they? Uh, they're available in the Asian market in grey import, which is, is illegal. Um, people have been doing that. I wouldn't advise it. We will put a two year warranty on them. Um, so yeah, there's that side of things you need to think of and consider and obviously the legalities around that as well. But it's been, um, yeah, it's good. I like it because it invigorates you again. It makes you think, wow, look where we're going. And it's great. It's not stuttering. And this is partly because of the other manufacturers as well, pushing the boundaries of what is possible. They had to answer with something or give up. And this is what they've come up with. So kudos to the other players in the market for the machines they're building and the investment they're putting in and the time they put it in. All of them. Um, because it just produces things like this. Choice in the market is great. Um, but yeah, really hope this video has helped.